What's going on everyone? Cold there, back again, dropping yet another video. Right guys, prison news now, more of it. I've been meaning to get round to these vlogs, I've finally done it. The time is now half past 12. It's now Monday because it's obviously after midnight. And it's a prison officer that was having a bit of a jiggy jiggy, how's your father, a bit of boom boom, uh, with a prisoner. And I'm sick of covering these stories, right? It's happening in prisons up and down the country, guys, right? In Cat A's to Cat D's, yeah, it's going on, right? And like I say, it's it doesn't surprise me, these stories. It's another female officer getting involved with another male prisoner, right? Now, like I say, these women are thick as shit. I mean, they're risking it all, right? And like I say, security in the prison, the prison officers... They start to click on and stuff because they start, when they're on shift, these officers go onto wings to see the prisoner, even though they're not working on that wing, or they're going into the cell excessive amounts of time throughout the day. So prison, prison officers start to pick up on it. Prisoners even pick up on it, do you know what I mean? The prisoner's telling his boys, listen, I'm banging her, mate, you know what I'm saying? Now, like I say, this isn't a one-off, as you've seen, how many prison officers have we covered that have either been jailed, been given suspended sentences, quit their jobs, because they've fallen in love with a con. Now, like I say, does the con fall in love with a prison officer? I don't think so. It's more about exploiting the situation. You're in prison, right? Women that you would normally look at, there's a lot of good-looking female officers out there, trust me, trust me, right? But there's also ugly ones but you've been in prison for, for, for months, years, whatever, right? And they start to, like, you wouldn't even look at them on the out, right? But in prison, they're looking like a model and stuff. You're looking, oh, baby. And right? you turn into little slime balls because that's what we do in the wings when a female officer's about or a female nurse goes on, goes on. Anyway, gonna, this is a story in the Nottinghamshire Live. There's a link in the description below, like I always do. We're going to do the story. So, prison officer, ignore the risks. For a cheap thrill by pursuing a relationship with an inmate. Same story, different day. HMP Loudham Grange prison officer Sarah Spink was given a suspended prison sentence. A prison officer ignored the risks for a cheap thrill after she pursued a relationship with an inmate at HMP Loudham Grange, a court heard. Sarah Spink, a prison officer since May of 2017, was arrested after investigations officer at the prison gathered evidence. She delved into whether or not there was an inappropriate relationship between mother of two Spinks and the man. When she examined CCTV, there was Spink talking to him for minutes on a prison landing and then disappearing into his cell. The officer also listened to Spink, listened to Spink in an intimate conversation with the prisoner during a phone call. When spoken to, Spink admitted she was in contact with a man on a prison phone system and a phone she later threw away. Described as a throwaway phone in court, that type of phone came on the recommendations of fellow prison officer Sarah Muzzin. So she had another officer that was probably having the same sort of relationship. This Sarah Muzzin was probably bang at it with a con as well. Spink, 28, of Rotherham, threw the mobile phone away when she became aware of Muzzin's arrest. Nottinghamshire Crown Court heard. In February, Musson, 33, of Rosecroft Drive, Daycroft, was sentenced to six months in prison after she began a personal relationship with an inmate serving a life sentence for murder at Loudoun Grange Prison. She pleaded guilty to misconduct in a public office. Spink pleaded guilty to misconduct in a public office and assisting or encouraging in the commission of an offence. The court heard the inmate's cell was searched and there was letters of an expressive intimate nature Addressed from Spink to him, said Jonathan Fountain, prosecuting. Spink had bought the throwaway phone and set up an account to allow the prison to call her. 96 calls were made to that number alone. On another prison phone, there were text messages and declarations of love. Mr Fountain said it was plain that the phone was used by the prisoner to communicate with Spink between April the 18th and April the 20th last year. So over a two day period, guys. When an inmate was moved to another prison, the phone was discovered with an improvised charger. Spink, who no longer works at the prison, no shit Sherlock, admitted there had been a physical contact with the man on more than one occasion when she gave him a hug and a kiss and the rest. 
<laughs> Judge Stuart Rafferty QC gave her six months in prison, suspended for two years, saying Muzzin's marriage was in ruins and yours is surviving in a difficult circumstance. She, like you, ignored the risk, which I can suppose can only be described as a cheap thrill, he said. Now, this is, like I say, guys, this is commonplace. It's happening in prisons up and down the country. You've got female prison officers, right, and male officers, obviously. You've got, you can get same-sex relationships, but they're not as frequent as female to male or male to female, like in the prison estate as well. So, like I say, prisoners look at the situation, right? One of the, in right, you've got two Sarahs here. You've got Sarah Spink and Sarah Muzzin. Sarah Muzzin was telling her, listen, yeah, get a throwaway phone, blah, blah, blah. She was Nick then, Sarah Muzzin. She was jailed for six months. Um, at that point, Sarah Spink, uh, who's the prison officer in this case, the mother of two, threw a wee, threw a wee, threw away that phone. Um, but the calls were being recorded on a prison phone as well. So they had, she had a mobile phone, he had a mobile phone. And then when they weren't doing that, they was on the prison phone and they record the calls and stuff. And it's very easy to work out, hold on, that's her voice. Like I say, the prison authorities, they're not clued up for the most part, but in other, in other situations, it becomes glaringly obvious. And then they zone in on it. And then these relationships come to the surface People get arrested um, and they can end up in prison. She got a suspended sentence. Sarah Muzzin got six months in custody. She'd do three. And she'd also be yet eligible for HDC or home detention curfew tag to you and I. Um, but like I say, this one got a suspended sentence. Now, like I say, should we really see... Is it a surprise to you guys? It's not a surprise to me, isn't it? It's kind of a lot of you guys have been in jail, have supported people that have been through jail or are just interested in the criminal justice system, even though I call it the criminal abuse system. Um, so it doesn't surprise me at all. You've got females locked on wings um, with male prisoners, not all the time. It's not like an all-female team, but you might have one or two female officers on a wing. Um, and like I say, they're working alongside prisoners, right? They're locking them up. They're working alongside the cleaners. They're locking the lads up. The, the, you, you spend a lot of time together, right? And you can become very friendly with these people. Now, if you're serving a life sentence, now, like I say, unless it's a whole life tariff, right, they're going to become eligible for parole at some point. Uh, like I say, that's if they're not serving a whole life tariff. So they're locked away. They've probably got a girlfriend. Um, but they're, they're looking, thinking, right, like I'm on visits and stuff. I can't really have jiggy jiggy on a visit. So an officer catches you right, or you catch the officer's eye, or... And like I say, that magnetic, like the magnetic sort of attraction is always going to be there, whether it's in a pub or a club, whether it's in a supermarket and you find a mutual attraction or you're working alongside somebody or in a prison. And we shouldn't be surprised when these relationships develop. Um, for me, I wouldn't have females. If I was in charge of them, if I was on the other side of the coin, I'm for prisoners always, as you know, and prisoners' families. But if I was like whiter than white and like a law abiding citizen and all that stuff. Right. I am now, but I'm still got a criminal mindset. So if I was in charge of the ministry of justice, I simply wouldn't have female officers working in male prisons. Right. It's not, it's not a sexual thing. It's not a sexist thing. Sorry. Women can do the job just as much as men. They don't have the physical presence granted, but they're good at the job. Right. And like I say, but for me, females should be in female prisons and males in male prisons. That's just how I would run it. But like I say, you've got female nurses and you've got male nurses and you've got female screws and male screws. And like I say, these sexual relationships are bound to develop. That Sarah Spink was this prisoner in love with her. I'm sorry, but I don't believe so. Uh, like I say, it's something to pass the time, keep you occupied and stuff. Do you know what I mean? You're keeping her sweet. She probably brought things in for him. Um, phones, drugs, whatever the case may be, tobacco, food, stuffs, whatever the case may be. Um, but like I say, prisoners are masters of manipulation and they're looking to manipulate every situation to their own advantage. Um, and if you get a prison officer over a barrel, no pun intended, then you can literally like, you're like, oh yeah, babe, send me a picture of yourself on WhatsApp in your uniform when your tits out showing your face. She's there putting it like putting a cat's arsehole on. Next minute, you've got her in a uniform, you've got a picture of her, listen babe, you better start bringing me shit in, or else I'm going to go to the top brass, blah, 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 right, and like I say, these sexual relationships develop, 
Um, what does the prison officer get out of this? She's risking a job. She's risking a career. She's risking her freedom as well. She's a mother of two. If she wasn't a mother of two, she probably would have ended up in prison. Um, it's misconduct in a public office or malfeasance in a public office. Um, what do you guys think? Are you guys sympathetic to her? Do you understand it? Uh, if you was a female and you was working in a male prison, would you be bang at it? Would you be professional? Um, is the prisoner manipulating her? Is he using her for his own advances and for his own um, gratifications? You'll have to tell me, guys. Like I say, you've got to think the prisoner's got nothing to lose. The prison officer's got everything to lose, really, hasn't she? Mother of two, risking a freedom and stuff, risking a job. She's obviously had to... She was probably suspended on full pay while an investigation was carried out. And then, obviously, she probably worked, like, was told of from a union rep or something, or the Prison Officers Association uh, union rep or something, that this is the evidence they've got, and then she probably quit a job, because it's better to quit than it is to be sacked. Do you know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think, guys. Start, the link's in the description below, like it always is. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.